Oh, hello, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. And today we're making some freeze frame graphics in Fusion that look something like this. Here's just this guy and oh wait, this is Michael. He's probably a bad guy. So this is the effect. It's this animated stroke that goes around our subject as well as these little pop-up words and our drawn on arrow. Let's do it. I'm gonna start out with whatever footage I want and I'm gonna do my freeze frame here in the edit page. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna let this play and then kind of just pause it where I think I want to have my freeze frame, maybe somewhere in there and select the clip right here, right click and then go up to retime controls. You can also hit control R and that will change this into speed change mode. And with this little drop down here, I'm just gonna select freeze frame. That's gonna add my freeze frame and I'm just gonna take this second point right here, which is the end of the freeze frame and I'm just gonna drag this out quite a bit, something like that. And I like to put my playhead here right at the end of that freeze frame, and then I'll just hit close. And once you close this, if you grab the edges, this will trim it, not time stretch it. So I'll just trim this back to the playhead. And so now we should have freeze frame right there and it should be a freeze frame all the way to the end of the clip. And that's what we want. The other thing I'll do is because this footage is 2K, and it's not quite the same aspect ratio is I'll take our inspector and, and just zoom this up until those black bars are gone. So we have everything in that 16 by nine frame. And from here, I'll right click and say new compound clip. The reason we're doing that is because if I were to send this to fusion right now, it's going to work on the original footage, which is not time stretched and is also not zoomed. So when we make a compound clip, it's almost like we're pre rendering this and we'll call this freeze frame footage and hit create. So now we have that in our timeline and with the playhead over our footage here, you can just click on the fusion page. That'll bring up the footage with the freeze frame and let's go through and make sure we know which frame that is. That looks like frame 51. Yep, frame 51 is the very first frame of our freeze frame stuff. So we're gonna remember that. So what do we need to do here? One thing that we'll have to do is cut him out so that we can move him separately from the background so that we can put things behind him like our animated stroke and just have a little bit more freedom. We're also gonna use this footage without him cut out. So we kinda need a version of him cut out and a version without him cut out, which is a great time to use the mat control node. The mat control node is sort of to the left of the middle of this interface of this toolbar here. Just grab this and drag it down. And mat control does a ton of different things, but one thing it's gonna do is let us apply a mask to a piece of footage without actually masking the footage itself. So we can apply the mask later. We just have to set it up to do that. So with the mat control select over here under combine, instead of none, we're gonna say combine alpha and then at the bottom, click on post multiply image. That's all you have to do to set that up. And now what this will do is if I have a mask, like a circle mask, I can run this media in through our mat control and apply my ellipse mask to the green input and it'll apply that mask to the footage without actually masking the footage itself. So now we have an option to either use the footage with the mask on it or the footage without the mask. This will make a little more sense in a few minutes. For now, what we're gonna do is draw a much better mask at frame 51 and I'm gonna use a polygon mask. I'll just drag one down and not connect it to anything but select it here. And then with the polygon mask selected, it's time to do some tracing. I'm gonna start down below because I don't want there to be any problems with this bottom edge. And we're just gonna do a really good job at tracing him out. All right, so now I have him traced out really well and we can attach this polygon mask to our mat control with the green input right there. And if we hit one on the keyboard, we can see there he is cut out. So let's take a second and get organized. Media in, let's rename. I'll hit F2 to rename this and I'll call it original footage underscore MI for media in and our polygon one. Let's call that person mask underscore PLY for polygon. Mat control will leave as is. And now we're set up to do some cool things. For instance, now that we have him isolated, we could take this mat control and put the output of the mat control over our original footage with a merge. I'll just grab a merge and I'll put our original footage in the background, disconnect our mat control from the media out and put our mat control in the foreground and put our merge into our media out. And if I hit two on the keyboard for our media out, we see nothing really changes, but we do have this isolated to where we can do something like color correct just the background, just drag a color corrector down in between our original footage and that merge. And if I make this blue, we can see we've kind of isolated our person. I'll get rid of that for now, but why don't we start out with our stroke? The idea is that we want to have a big thick stroke just kind of 
draw around our guy. And the way that we're gonna do that is use this mask to make that stroke and put that solid color stroke under this layer right here. So the first thing we'll do is just duplicate our mask. The reason we're gonna duplicate this is we're actually going to change the mask shape a little bit. So I'll select person mask and hit control C, double click off and hit control V, and I'll throw this down here. And I think what we're gonna do, I'll just move, move our nodes around a little bit, so move this up maybe. And this mask is going to mask a background node. So I'll grab a background node from our toolbar. And here we're going to just mask our background like this. And this background is going to be the color of our stroke. So let's make this like kind of that orangish yellow, something like that. And here, if we bring up background in viewer one, we'll see we have this kind of yellow mask, which isn't exactly what we want because this is gonna be perfectly behind our person layer. So I'll select this mask. I'll actually just bring this up in viewer two so it's easier to see on the recording. And with our polygon mask selected, I'm gonna pump up our border width. And that's just going to basically just make this whole mask a little bit bigger. I think like that will work just fine. And we'll rename this stroke mask. So now we have kind of this a little bit bigger yellow solid color. And we're gonna put that in between our original footage and our foreground here. So I'll just grab a merge and drag this in between our original footage and our merge like this and put this masked background into the foreground of our merge too. Let's take a look at what this is making. If I select media out one and hit two on the keyboard, we have what, look at what's going on. Oh baby, we're it's going. So make a little bit of room here. Maybe I'll split this out like this and make sure we rename everything. F2, we'll call this yellow BG. We'll call this stroke merge. This is gonna be called foreground merge. Now we have everything lined out so we don't get too confused. So now that we have our stroke, that's cool, but we want it to animate on, right? We want it to go And there are a lot of different ways that we could do this, but I'll show you a fancy way that I really like. First thing we're gonna do is go down to our nodes. First thing we're gonna do is go down to our nodes and I'm gonna make a background node. And then I'm gonna make a paint node, which is the fourth one over. And we'll just pipe our background into our paint. What this is doing is making a black and white mat that we can use to control the transparency of stuff. I'm gonna go up to this fifth icon here in the upper left-hand corner of our viewer and select polyline stroke. And with the paint node, what's really cool is I can draw a little shape, a much rougher shape than we have. It just kind of sort of goes along the edge of our guy here. It doesn't have to be very good at all. And we can use this to kind of draw this effect on. So now if I hit one on the keyboard with our paint node, we can see on the left, we have this kind of soft white stroke here. And all this is gonna do is make a mask for our nice stroke here. So I can just take this sizing up. It can be really big actually. Take the softness down a little bit, something kind of like that. And the reason we're doing this is because down at the bottom part of our inspector under stroke controls, there's an attribute called right on. And if I take the end and move this back and forth, it draws that line along that path that I just made. So we can animate this as a mask to draw this really nice stroke on. Now we could do this all at once, I imagine, and draw the exact stroke that we want in our paint node, but we'd have to redraw our entire mask and we already had to make it for our person mask. So we're just gonna use this paint to animate our existing stroke. So we can take the output of this paint node and put it into the merge for our stroke like this. And if we open our stroke merge and go over to settings and down here under fit mask where it says channel, instead of alpha, we're gonna say luminance. That's just telling that whatever we connect to this mask input, we wanna use as a black and white image, a, a mat. If we take this paint node and adjust the right on, look what happens. It writes this on, isn't that awesome? So now we can animate this starting at frame 51 I'll make a keyframe and we'll have this come on in like half a second or so. So we'll do like 10 or 12 frames later and then we'll animate the end all the way back to one. So now as this plays back, we get our animation. Pretty cool. Move my nodes around here because I just like my merges all in one row for some reason. So now let's add our text. What we'll do is use text plus, which is the third icon over here, drag this over and take the output and put it over the output of our foreground merge. And now whatever text we say, let's say Michael, pick a font we like, size it and position it how we like it. And now I wanna add like a background plate to this text. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. The easiest is probably in our text plus node. If we go to the inspector, all the way to the fourth tab here where it says shading. Right now we're on shading element one, which is just our white text, but I'm gonna switch this to shading element two and click enabled. And by default, that makes a red outline around our text. Under appearance, that's set to text outline. I'm gonna switch it to the next one over, which is border fill. That's gonna make a little box around each letter. And down here, let's extend horizontal 
and that'll kind of fill in those gaps as well as give us a little bit of padding on the left and right, looking classy. Over here where it says color, I'm gonna grab this eyedropper and drag it over to our stroke and pick that same color. And let's go back to shading element one. And here, instead of white, let's make this kind of almost black, like a pretty dark gray. So there's our text and we can adjust this, put it wherever we like, maybe make this a little bit smaller and let's just copy and paste this text. So let's, I'll select the text one, hit control C, double click off and hit control V. And this one, take the output and put it over the output of our merge one. And for this one, let's move this down and we'll say probably bad guy, probably a bad guy. And we'll size that down a little bit, maybe adjust this, kind of move it around. That's the next thing about using the shading elements for the box is that it always sizes to the text. Maybe we'll do something like that and I'll align it left using this H anchor button right here. Now we need to draw our arrow, which we're going to do almost the exact same way as we did with our white stroke mask here. I'm going to make a background node. This is just so we can draw something with our paint node. So I'll just take the alpha for our background and bring that all the way down and let's rename our nodes here. This is clear background. This is subtext. This is text and this is name. And for our background, I'll again grab a paint node and pipe that into the paint and we'll merge this paint over our merge two like that. And now we're ready to paint with our paint node. I'm gonna do the same thing. Go up here to the fifth icon over where it says polyline stroke and click. Now we're just gonna draw a little arrow. I'll draw it from here like this and do this pretty much just how you would do it in normal life. You can click and adjust the that path a little bit. Something maybe like that. With our paint node selected, I'll go over here to brush controls and let's take the softness all the way down and maybe not all the way down, most of the way down. We do want it to kind of have a little bit of a soft edge just so it's anti-aliased, just about to match our other stuff here. Let's take the size down a little bit and we'll use this same color. So again, now if I take these stroke controls and move this right on, that will draw the arrow on. Isn't that neat? I think it's so neat. Okay, so here at frame 51, we have our animation and let's have this start like right after this stroke. So frame 64, I'll add a keyframe and bring the end all the way down. Then we'll move this down a few frames and write it on all the way to the end. So now we should have a pretty cool little animation from frame 51 on. Yeah, that's cool. But we should animate this text. There are a ton of ways that you could do this. One quick way is just to add a transform and just scale it up from nothing. So let's do like maybe like halfway through our stroke, frame 60 or so. I'll make a transform node under each of these texts. So just select the text, hit shift spacebar and type XF, enter. And now we have a transform node that we can use. And the advantage of using a transform node instead of just sizing something in the merge or the text is that you have this little pivot offset. So you can adjust where this scales from. And we're just gonna scale this from like right here, just kind of on the left edge of our word. And now if we size this down, it scales up from nothing right there. So again, I'll hit the keyframe diamond and we want this completely up by, I don't know, frame 75. Eh, frame 70 maybe. So that's at one, I'll go to our first keyframe and then bring it all the way down to zero, just like this. So now this pops on like that. That probably needs to be a little bit quicker. We'll adjust that in a minute. And now I'll take this transform node and I can just copy, double click off. In fact, I can just select our subtext and hit control V, paste that. And that's gonna do the exact same thing, but it's still scaling from this pivot. So I'll just move the pivot point down here for this text. So now both of our pieces of text will animate from their own pivot point like that. And we are almost done here, almost done. We do need to adjust some of this timing, but we're gonna do one last thing first. All of these graphics, we want to move separately from our background here because we want to just add a little bit of parallax. So an easy way to do this is to just disconnect our background footage from all the way over here and then merge all of this, like everything over our original background image again, but later down the line. So what we can do is just make another clear background here. I'll just select the one that we have, this clear background, hit control C and move over to the beginning of our comp, double click and hit control V. That'll paste our clear background here. And we're gonna pipe this into the stroke merge instead of our original footage. The reason for that is this merge needs something to merge over. So we'll just do that. And now our whole comp is just over nothing. We've done all of this for nothing. We'll take the output of our original footage and put that into the background of the merge. And then we're gonna take the merge all the way over here and put this output right here that is going to our media out. We're gonna take that and put that into the foreground of our merge and then put that merge into the media out. And now everything looks kind of how it did. Yay, we've done nothing. But here's the difference. If we take this merge four, which merges everything over our original background, we can move everything all at once separately from our background. That means that we could do something like 
scale this a little bit, scale it up or down, and we get a little bit of that parallax effect. So to clean things up a little bit, I'll hold down Alt and drag anywhere on one of these lines, and I can make a little elbow, and we'll just make things a little bit nicer that way. And let's name things. This is our arrow paint. This is our master merge. And now let's animate this, this parallax here. So starting at frame 51, I think instead of actually doing this in the merge, we'll do a transform again. So let's select arrow merge and I'll hit shift space bar and XF and we'll call this parallax or parallax because I don't want to spell parallax. MRG. Nope. XF for transform. Now again, we can adjust where our pivot is. So I'm going to move this to be right kind of in the center of our person here. And at frame 51, I'll click this keyframe diamond and set that size to one. But then throughout the rest of the comp, we want it to be scaling up just a little bit. So at the very end of our comp, we'll push this size up just a little bit. So we get a little bit of that parallax effect between the foreground and the background. Let's take a look at what we got so far. There's our effect. Pretty cool. I am going to color correct that background a little bit. We can do that by just grabbing the color corrector, the fifth icon over here, and drag that in between our original footage and our master merge, just like this. And I'll just push this just a little bit blue in our master control here. And because I don't want this to be blue the whole time, here at frame 51, under settings here, let's animate this blend. So I'll add a keyframe here and bring this all the way down to zero. That just takes the entire strength, everything that this node is doing and takes it down to zero. And we'll have this animate on as the stroke comes on, we'll have it completely done by the time the stroke is done at frame 63. We'll blend this all the way up to one like that. So now we have the stroke come in and everything turns blue as well. Pretty nice. All right, last thing that we have to do is adjust the timing of everything, which, I like to do in the spline panel, in the upper right hand corner here, left icon is the spline panel. If you click on that, that'll open up the spline panel down here and it should show everything in this list that is animated. So you can pick which ones you want to show on the graph. The ones that I am concerned about, actually let's rename some stuff. Let's transform, this is gonna be name transform. This is gonna be subtext. That just makes it easier to see here in the spline panel. So we'll take the sizing for our name and subtext as well as the arrow end, show our paint stroke end two for mask. And we can kind of get an idea of how fast these things are going. So one thing I know is I want the transforms to be faster. So I'll just select both of these. I can just hold down shift and move this down just so these go a lot faster. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so that comes on a lot faster now. I like that. Our arrow is too fast. Must be this one right here. Yeah, I like that a little better. So now that we have the timing roughly down, we can bring everything back up. And what I like to do is select the end keyframe of everything and then hit F on the keyboard. That flattens out this graph, which means that things will slow down before they stop generally, which just makes things look a little bit more smooth and pro. Yeah, it looks cool. So here's our finished effect. Like probably a bad guy. Pretty cool little effect. A little bit, a little bit of advanced uh, fun for uh, for fusion, right? Hey, if you stayed all the way to the end, make sure to drop a like. I love you. I just, I just love you so much.